I am so pleased that you asked me this question because I wish everybody knew about this. Hello, I'm Dr. Nagat. I'm an NHS GP and I'm going to explain how vaginal oestrogen for urinary tract infections and does it work? The simple answer is yes, it does. But let me explain all the anatomy and the biology behind this. Firstly, let's have a look at the prevalence of urinary tract infections. Almost half of all women who have will have at least one UTI in their lives. The risk of UTI in women increases after menopause. Now, that's really significant because when perimenopause happens, we get a decrease in oestrogen. The other time that we get a decrease in oestrogen is when we're breastfeeding. So remember that because I'll come back to it. After having UTI, 20 to 40 percent will have a reoccurrence and reoccurring infections are usually reinfections of bacteria. Why is that important? Well, let's take a look at the anatomy of the vulval vaginal area and where the urethra, the perineum and the back passage is. So this is the gross female anatomy. We've got the, the bladder with the urethra coming out and that will be just around our pubic area. Then we've got the ureters that go up into the kidneys. So this is our pelvic floor area. This is our vulval vaginal area, which is really important to understand. And it's really important to know the anatomy as well. So you'll see from the top, you'll see the clitoris. And then you've got underneath that, you've got the urethra. In the last picture, I showed you the gross anatomy of the urethra going into the bladder. And then you've got the vaginal opening. And around that, you've got the labia majora and labia minora. In between that, you've got the perineum and also the anal back passage, the anus. It's important to understand that around the anus um, and in our back passages, we have normal bugs and bacteria, most common being E. coli. In our vulva vaginal area, we have candida albicans, otherwise known as thrush or bacterial vaginosis, which is also normal, something that we harbour as women. The pH needs to be really important as well. And then up into our urethra in our bladder, we have loads of other bugs like proteases, Klebsiella. We can have coliforms a whole load of bugs that can be over flourished um if we don't have our immune system uh, keeping it uh, under wraps or looking after it and also if we overwash we can get rid of some of that good healthy bacteria that we have as well and also if the ph of the urine changes which gives you that acid burny feeling which can be part of the cystitis picture so the role of oestrogen is so important when it comes to the pelvic area and looking after our bladder. The data has shown that the oestrogen is an immune modulator. It's something that our immune system uses. And I've, over my years as a doctor, I've likened oestrogen to this lovely lubricating hormone. What it also shows um, is that oestrogen contributes to uh, the functional integrity of the bladder barrier by decreasing the inflammatory process, which is linked with urinary tract infections. Um, and also what it does is it increases um, the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines to fight off urinary infections as well. So oestrogen is really important around our vulva and our vagina. And if you have a look at this, we have lots of oestrogen floating around when we are before menopause in the perimenopausal phase. And we see that as well. And when we're breastfeeding, women also then decrease their oestrogen in order to breastfeed. So we see a decrease in the oestrogen level. So if you look at the perimenopausal decline in circulating oestrogen, what happens is you get increased inflammation inflammation. I hope this picture comes out clearly because it will show you that when you have lots of oestrogen you get thick epithelial layer you get this lovely thick area of mucosa also what it does in around the bladder and vulval area it allows to lower the vaginal ph because if you have a high ph it gives you the symptom symptoms of a uti and also gives you the protection and then when um if i move when you are in the postmenopausal phase, particularly if you lower the level of um, oestrogen, I'm just going to move myself a little bit there. What can happen is, is that you get what's known as atrophy. You get a thin, disrupted epithelial layer, a lower level of um, protection around there, and the pH increases. But actually, if we add oestrogen back, so the asymptomatic HRT therapy, it allows some of that replenishment back. What happens is, is that as our oestrogen decreases, and it can happen at different phases of our life, we end up getting what's known as genitourinary syndrome of the menopause. So you lose the laxicity around the bladder and the vagina, and you lose the strength in regards to protection, and also the pH lowers as well. This is why topical vaginal oestrogen is so important for women, because we are cyclical beings, and also we transition as well in various phases of our lives. If it's in our fertile years, then when we're breastfeeding, our oestrogen decreases. So that recurrent itch that you're getting, and you're breastfeeding, and you've been checked, and it's not thrush, we have to give topical vaginal oestrogen back to you 
So we should be telling this work to our women who are breastfeeding and also in the antenatal postnatal phase and likewise in the perimenopausal phase providing oestrogen back. Since 2013, the data has shown, as you can see from here, that vaginal oestrogen treatment has to found to lower uh, vaginal pH and also increase lactobacilli, which and also decrease the colonization of bugs. But there are various different types of vaginal oestrogens out there. You can get um, oestrogen cream like a vestin. Uh, you can get rings uh, like oestering as well. You can get Vagifem or Vagirux, or you can get DHEA such as Intra Rosa. It's really important to understand that these are not the same as the oral HRT or the patches or the gels that you take, which is systemic and goes throughout your whole body. This only directly works around the vagina and the vulval area. And repeated data has shown time and time again that those that have had breast cancer and been treated for breast cancer, um, or even currently might have breast cancer, depending on talking with their uh, breast cancer surgeon, they are still eligible for topical vaginal oestrogen. And topical vaginal oestrogen, as you can read below, takes about two to three months to work. And also it allows the area to be replenished again. As a physiotherapist, I'm really pleased that you've asked me about topical vaginal oestrogen because it really helps with um, the pelvic area. So we know that pelvic urinary incontinence is so uh, significant part of the work that we do as GPs. And as physios, I refer a lot of women um, to look after their pelvic floor health. And the RCOG, the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, have actually in their current guidelines added in topical vaginal oestrogen to be given alongside um, doing pelvic floor exercise as well, because we've got to replenish that area back with topical uh, vaginal oestrogen. I hope that answers your questions and happy to take any more.